So welcome to the introduction to the Awakening of the Illuminated Heart and the work of Drumbelo Melchizedek, uh, living in the heart, stepping out of the duality of the mind and into the unity of the heart. So this will just be a little overview and some nuggets to share uh, with you from his body of work. So my first question would be like, how many of you are familiar with Drumbelo Melchizedek? Okay a little bit. Um, so Drumbelo wrote these books in the, um, the early 90s, and they were from workshops that he had been giving in the late 80s and 90s called The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, Volumes 1 and 2. You may have seen them around. They have been around in the New Age movement like since the early 90s, and he is sort of responsible for bringing the awareness of sacred geometry sort of back into the collective awareness, and he did all, you know, these books all about alternative history relating to the human race and pulling a lot from the work of Zachariah Sitchin and the Sumerian tablets and what maybe really happened on this planet. And then also tuning into sacred geometry, the Merkaba, which is the light body and higher self connection and all kinds of really fun metaphysical stuff. And so um, I remember back when I lived in Ashland in the 90s and people would watch VHS, H, VHS tapes of his a flower of life workshops that had been re-recorded and re-recorded and re-recorded and they would just make their way around the community and it would be like 28 tapes and people would dive into his far out stuff and I was personally never that interested in it um, because it seemed intellectual it seemed you know geometry and numbers and it just didn't appeal to my more sort of feminine, intuitive minded ways. And then in 2011, uh, when Fukushima happened, I um, had a bit of a wake up call about like, how do I need to prepare for what's going on in this world? And, you know, for a month or two, I started stocking food and water and becoming a prepper. And then I realized that really the only thing I needed to do to um, prepare for whatever was coming in this world was to get into my heart and to like really get into my heart. And I had been, you know, living in ashrams in India in the 90s and following lots of different spiritual paths. So it wasn't brand new to me, but I knew that I needed something more. And a friend recommended this book called Living in the Heart by Drumbelo. And I thought, oh, Drumbelo, that guy with all the geometry and all the intellectual stuff. I was like, I don't know if that's for me. And she goes, no, no, trust me. This new book, Living in the Heart, is totally different. So this is the book that he came out with in 2010, I think it was, or something like that. And um, so I got it from the library just to try it out. And I read it from start to cover. I couldn't put it down till. I was done and it was my first time really diving into Drumbelo and um, some of the things he said seemed pretty far out at, to me at the time. Now, of course, they don't. But at the time, I was like, whoa, this guy's far out and I believe him. <laughs> and he mapped out this whole thing about getting into the heart and really, truly getting into the heart and out of the mind. So I started to... Um, read all his books and watch any YouTube video. And then finally went over to his website to find him. I was like, he's even still alive? What's this guy up to? And I found out that he was teaching an online, an, an in-person workshop in Sedona of, in November of 2011. And um, I had just happened to go online the day that they put up the workshop to find him. That was the first time I went to go look for him and it sold out within a matter of a few hours and I got in. So I went to Sedona in 2011 and I took this five day training with Drunbelo and I walked away saying to myself, this is the most important thing I've ever done. Uh, hands down out of all the things I've done. I was just floored by the information. You know, Drumbelow is not about being a teacher. He's not about trying to be um, any sort of authority. He's all about giving each person the tools that they need for themselves so that we don't need teachers and we don't need workshops anymore and we don't need anything. Everything that we need to access, we have within ourselves. So really in these five days, he was just, you know, helping me build my own toolkit so that I could walk my own path without needing further things outside of myself. So that's why it seemed so important. And he put out a call during that workshop that he wanted to train a hundred or so teachers to be his facilitators, to kind of go around the world and teach his body of work. So I signed up for that and was accepted and spent a couple of weeks with him in Mexico in early 2012 training and became a facilitator of this work and have been teaching it ever since. I've taught over 70 of these Awakening Illuminated Heart workshops since 2012 to probably close to a thousand people. And so every time I have the honor of doing this workshop, 
I, I learn more. It goes deeper for me. It's like, you know, the work of Drumbolo being so metaphysical, it's like layers and layers. I'll hear something for the first time almost and be like, whoa, I get it. <laughs> and um, so I have sort of been leaving, living and breathing this work um, since then. So and obviously, as you can tell, I'm really passionate about it and uh, love to talk about it and share about it. And I'm doing the workshops in person in Portland these days for very small groups of people who are brave enough to come out, you know, with the lockdowns and also doing them in uh, online. Uh, probably every other month I have one coming up in like four days. And so uh, the idea of this work is first and foremost to connect to your higher self, um, which in Drumbelow's understanding, we're in third dimension here. And in fourth dimension, we have duality. Like we still have a certain level of duality, just not like in the third dimension. Drumbelow's understanding is that we live on multidimensional realities right now, currently. Um, and we're existing in the third dimension here as this, but we're also existing in the fourth and the fifth and onward. And fifth dimension is the first place where we have a certain level of unity consciousness. And then we have to split from unity consciousness to come down into the fourth dimension, which there is some duality. And so in that fourth dimensional level, we have at least two of ourselves there because we split into duality. And Drumbolo says that in the third dimension, we are 90% matter and 10% light. And then in the, but in the fourth dimension, we are 90% light and 10% matter. And as he maps out in the Flower of Life books, there is a different sizes to the dimensional levels. And he compares it to the temples in Egypt, where there's like really huge temples where the doorways are huge, the, the statues are huge. And it isn't metaphor. It's that there were beings walking around who had come from the fourth and the fifth dimension. And so they were, they were actually, you know, and we also have seen the Nephilim and the bones of giants around the world in the past. And Drumbolo says that beings in the third dimension, we are three to five feet tall. I mean, five to seven feet tall. And in the fourth dimension, we are 12 to 15 feet tall. And in the fifth dimension, beings are about 30 to 35 feet tall, which is what you're seeing in those Egyptian statues and whatnot. So let's put, piece all that together. A fourth dimensional being is 90% light and 10% matter is 12 to 15 feet tall. And, and so this describes what a lot of people associate with as their angel. A lot of times people see angels and they might actually be seeing their own higher self. And, and because we split from fifth dimension into two to come down to the fourth dimensional level, and then we come down into third, Drumbolo says we have at least two higher selves or two of our own personal angels on the fourth dimensional level. And so if we can connect to these beings, which are a part of our very own self, then um, everything starts to open up because we agree to have blinders on, right? To come down into third dimensional level and live this life. Somehow we've all agreed to forget who we are and kind of just play by the rules of third dimension and have no real awareness of who we were before we came into this life. And if we're lucky enough, we start to do the work to remember it. However, our fourth dimension selves, our angels don't have the blinders on that we have in this third dimensional level. So they know exactly why we're here, what, what, who we were became into this life, what we're intending to do, what is our purpose here? All these things our own higher self knows. And so to connect with the higher self can be um, a really a great boon and an acceleration in our life path. And so it's one of those tools in the toolbox that helps us to not need anything outside of ourself. And so over the last eight years, I've developed a relationship to my own higher self that, you know, really feels like that still small voice within and, um, and almost like a, another part of myself overlaid over me. And I can ask questions and get clarification. And just, I've come to trust my inner voice 100% over all this time and just listen clearly without doubt, without second guessing. So um, I'd love to share that in our time today, a little ceremony that we can do together to connect to our own higher selves. So any comments or questions so far? <laughs> it's really cool, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and so let's just talk a little bit more about uh, Drumbolo's offerings. Oh, no, actually, maybe let's just stop and ride that wave of the higher self and do a little ceremony, a little circle to in call in our higher selves. And then we'll take it from there. 
And so in this understanding of calling in your higher self, in the four day workshop, we do an opening circle where we do call one of these beings into our own self. So we'll do that now. And Drumbolo says, you don't have to have any previous knowledge about either one of your higher selves. You don't have to know which one you'd be calling in um, or, or anything. We would just do this little circle and then call in one of our higher selves to come forth and stand in front of us. And then you may feel as this being sort of just arrives, who is you? So, you know, calling in other beings is questionable. You really have to have a strong shield if you're going to do channeling work or call in other beings outside of yourself. You really want to be clear about that, right? And some people really do that successfully if they if they know their boundary and what, what is allowed in and what isn't. There's no risk of any of that with this because we're not calling in anything outside of ourselves. This is us on a higher level, right? It's almost like sometimes I envision it as like putting on my crown and like I feel that sense of royalty and uh, divine nature. So we're going to call forth a, this part of ourselves from a higher dimensional level to come forth and stand in front of us. And then I'm going to talk directly to these higher selves and ask them to turn around so that they're facing in the same direction as us, right? As our human their human counterparts, and then step back into our physical bodies. Now, these beings are 12 to 15 feet tall, right? They're like, like angelic presences. So you may see or feel or sense these beings kind of shrink down to shrink into your body. Many people who do this feel actually when the being steps into them that they, they get larger uh, and feel like that they're like filling the space that much more. And so then after the being steps in, which you may feel, then we'll have some moments for silence so that you can begin a dialogue with your higher self. And so that would just be up for you to figure out how do you, how would you communicate with this being who is now inside of you, is merged with you. And Drumbolo says that your higher self merges with you through your central nervous system. And so it almost like becomes a part of, of who you are. And so how would you communicate? with this being, you know, you could just sit there in that space and just feel the presence. And then if it feels right, you could start to talk words inside of your own head and speak to this being um, and just ask for some understanding or begin a conversation or a dialogue. And then um, we'll do that for a few moments and then we can come back into the circle and share and then talk about some other things. So any questions? Okay. Hi, Rita. Welcome. We're going to do a little exercise here of connecting to our own higher self, our angel presence from the fourth dimension. So you're welcome to just hop in and go on that ride. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> um, so let's take a moment to uh, close our eyes or leave them open, actually, so we can see each other because we're going to feel like we're in a circle right now. And so how we can do that is by feeling that there is a, a golden thread of light and love from your heart that's going to every other heart in this circle. And it's like we're a, like a web around the planet, right? Because we're connected through space and time. And just feel as if you're maybe holding hands with the person next to you and you're connected from this golden thread in your heart. And also feel that we're all standing on the same earth. Even though we're probably in our houses, we're still on the earth and we're on one earth. So that's how we are a singular circle, right? We're all connected in through Mother Earth. And just feel that presence of Mother Earth that is holding us all in this circle. And also feel the presence of Father Sky, because uh, we're all in the same air mass. There is only one singular air mass on the entire planet, and we're all plugged into it. And so that's Father Sky connected through the air. And so feel that you are sort of plugged into this singular air mass that we're all breathing. So held lovingly 
in the arms of Mother Earth and Father Sky, also in the direct center, the center of the heart. And also calling in the support of the directions of the north, the south, the east, and the west. Calling in the support here in the circle of all the beings of light, the pure beings of light who are available to help us remember who we really are. Feel yourself supported by all these beings that form a circle around the entire globe, supporting us on our journey. And may all the beings in the universe who wish there to be love, truth, and beauty, trust, harmony, peace, and reverence for God in all life throughout the universe. May those beings be here with us now as we remember who we are. And may one of those beings who is a part of our very own self, our very own higher self on the fourth dimension, may that being come forth and stand in front of each and every one of us now. Higher selves, we welcome you. Higher selves, I ask you to turn and face in the same direction that your human counterpart is facing in front of them. And now higher selves, I ask you to just simply step back into your human forms. Now, I'm just making space for more of you to arrive into your physical form. I'm just saying yes and inviting this energy in. And for a moment, just feel what it is like to feel like more of yourself. And take a few moments to begin a dialogue with your higher self.
And let this voice of your higher self resonate as something familiar, something that you can call on at any time. Let this be the voice that answers when you ask questions inside of yourself. And take some nice deep breaths into the heart, feeling the presence of your higher self your own divinity. Feeling the golden thread that is going from your heart to every other heart in the circle. The circle we are creating around the planet connected to Mother Earth, connected to Father Sky, and where they meet in the middle in the heart is us, the Divine Child. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes and be with us in the circle in this place and see if you can hold this connection to your own higher self while we engage and talk even further. Hmm. Does anybody want to share anything about their experience? It's nice to just be here. <laughs> Anybody feel when your higher self just sort of entered into you? So that's a really nice a tool to have in your toolbox, just as a, you know, defined way to connect with your own higher nature at any given time. You know, there's lots of different ways to do it. And I'm sure we've all can connected to that voice within. And so this is just kind of giving you a reliable way and just any time, just feel that presence coming in and merging with you and asking to guide your emotions, to guide your words, to guide your thought forms and um, can be a really great ally to be connected to your own self uh, without the blinders on. Okay. Well, we could probably just end here and stay in bliss, but I'll, I'm happy to talk on and, and uh, share more with you. I'll talk even though I just, yes. Um, yeah, I feel so expansive and I feel like it included all of Portland too. Just like massive. And I don't usually feel that. I don't usually have a physical experience. Yeah, and I think the I get light language is what came in, which I get a lot, but I didn't know how to use it. But now I realize it's my higher self coming in. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's a great. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, because I always 
I just, I always want it to just be me. And then I always thought the light language is coming from somebody else, but it's from me. <laughs> so what a gift. Thank you so much. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> no more confusion. Oh, and just, just expansion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So even before the class, when you came on, it was like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. And I am sitting under a pyramid because I got one, a copper pyramid for fun because I thought it was cool. I don't know how to use them, but I kind of do know. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> That's great. I have a whole bunch on my ceiling, little pyramids everywhere. <laughs> hmm. Anyone else? Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the duality of the mind and the unity of the heart. And so this is a big piece of the uh, of Drumbelow's Living in the Heart book. And also the work in the workshop is the understanding that we are living in the third dimension, which is a dualistic realm, right? So Drumbelow talks about this in the Flower of Life books as well, is the third dimension is a disharmonic note in the scale, right? We have 12 notes, 12 12 dimensions and then within each dimension there's 12 overtones right for a total of 144 just like you know there's on a piano and we have the notes and then we have 12 in each one so we're in the third dimension which is a disc discordant note <laughs> and um by its very nature and it is a realm based in duality and so that's why our brain is dualistic. We have a left side and a right side and everything is so based in duality here. And so when you are trying to create your life, whether you're doing that consciously by like, I'm gonna create my reality or you're just doing it unconsciously, which, cause we're doing it all the time, whether we're aware of it or not, we are creating our reality based upon our thoughts and our intentions and what we're sort of vibrating out. And so if we're doing that, living in our mind, we're gonna be doing that based in duality. And we are taught from a very early age to be living in our mind. That's what school is all about and our conditioning and our training is all about how do we exist here in our mind. And, and that's where the duality is. So I'd invite you to just take a moment right now. Think about if you are not, your body, but you are a spirit inhabiting your body. So we are, um, we are unlimited, right? We're infinite, infinite spirit. And yet we can also be infinite or finite. And if we have these physical forms right now, we're in a finite form and infinity has no center, but a finite experience has a center. So this we'll call your spirit center and your spirit center exists within or around your body. We're not our body. We are a spirit inhabiting this body. And if I asked you to close your eyes right now, just take a moment and think about, all right, if I'm not my body, but I'm a spirit inhabiting my body, where am I located? Right now, where am I? And you might visualize this sense of yourself as a little crystal, a little glowing sphere or a little flame, something like that. See if you can get a sense. Where am I residing in or around my body right now? Can you get a sense of that? And even if not in this moment, it's an interesting to, thing to start to track, you know, over the next few days when you're lying in bed, like, where am I, where am I? And start to notice where you inhabit uh, your consciousness. And since our eyes are in the mind and we're also taught from a very early age in schooling and whatnot to be in the mind, the majority of people in our culture are living in their mind and specifically the pineal chakra in the direct center of the head says Drumbolo. And if you're living there, then that's where you're creating reality from. And um, people can also be other places in any chakra or even around the field, but most people are living in their minds at this time. And so creating reality from there, you're gonna create a reality based upon duality. 
And what that means is if you're trying to create your life and focus on something and manifest it into the world, you're, you may get exactly what you want. If you do something like a vision board and you're thinking about what you want to manifest or whatever, you may get it and you think, wow, you know, the secret's working or this power of manifestation is really working. And what you don't realize is, and this is a huge thing, is that because you're doing it based in duality and you're doing it from the mind, which is a dualistic organ, it can never be otherwise. Um, if you're doing it from your mind, you're gonna create what you want and then you're gonna also create exactly what you don't want because that's the nature of duality. It has to be that way. And so, wow, everything's kind of going great. I'm kind of manifesting what I want and yet all these other things keep happening to me as well. And then you're on the roller coaster of up and down, good and bad. And, oh, you needed to manifest this money and then you did, but then your car got hit and smashed. And, you know, this is up and down dualistic thing. And a lot of times people can go years and years working with methods of manifestation through the mind and not realize that they're also all through that creating all the havoc that's also being manifested. It's just a huge piece. It's so simple. But if you can learn to drop your consciousness and awareness from existing in the brain and having your spirit centered there to going into the heart and living from here, everything changes because the heart is not based in duality. The heart functions only from oneness consciousness, unity consciousness, right? This is where the unified field is, the sacred space of the heart, the tiny space of the heart that Drumbolo talks about in the Living in the Heart books. And mapping this place out, learning to go in there and set your home up in your heart, and then creating reality from there, you can create exactly what you want with no dualistic side effect. And when you're creating from the mind, things have to be manifested in a logical way because the mind is logical. Like, so, so the mind is not the realm of miracles. So if you wanted to create rain, you would like, maybe you'd be manifesting and thinking about rain and with all your senses and doing whatever manifestation you need to. And then you would see the clouds roll in and then you would see the weather change and then the, the rain start to happen because that's logical. And Things have to follow a logical pattern in duality, but in unity consciousness, this is the realm of miracles. Nothing has to follow a linear logical method. Rain could literally come out of a blue sky. And so this realm of being in the heart just opens up reality to magic and miracles and living life from a state of grace, really. You get off the roller coaster and you in, enter into a river of grace. Uh, any comments or questions so far? I do. How do you stay grounded while you're doing this? So this, this is a, I'm talking about a specific meditation that, that we learn in the workshop, which is in, also in that book, Living in the Heart, of learning to travel in your body, right? To get into the sacred space of the heart and set yourself up there. Before you do that, there's a, a smaller meditation that we can actually do now. We have, we'll have time to do that. And Drumbolo calls this the unity breath meditation or the Holy Trinity vibration. And so every indigenous culture around the planet, before they go into sacred ceremony and going into your own sacred space of your heart is going into sacred ceremony. And so before they go into sacred ceremony, they connect with mother earth and father sky. And that creates a grounded, open-hearted vibration that will allow one to travel from the mind and go into the heart. But it also keeps you grounded while you're doing your meditation. And so in Drumbolo's understanding, Mother Earth is the planet that we live on, right? She is alive. She's a conscious living being. And so Mother Earth is the planet and all the living beings on her body, right? We are all a part of Mother Earth. And then Father Sky is everything else in creation, including the moon, other planets, all life everywhere. That's Father Sky. And so if you feel love for Mother Earth and for Father Sky, you're feeling love for all of creation. It's also a very solid, grounded place to do a meditation from. It's like a key that unlocks the door to the heart and makes it more accessible to enter if you're running that vibration of love. And so, and another way to do that is also to sit outside against a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, so that because the tree itself is connected to Mother Earth through the roots and connected to Father Sky through reaching up. So that can be also a really wonderful way to stay grounded. I feel very activated, right? I don't usually, I'm not like this at all. This is very unusual. I don't really have this experience. And I actually saw sacred ge geometry. 
which I don't, I've only seen sacred geometry in Hawaii. I would see the, I would, and then when I left, never again. <clears throat> so this is very trippy. You're very gifted. <laughs> you just bring it on. <laughs> You're like a light switch, like, woo! Wow, who turned the lights on? <laughs> Yeah, wow. it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a really high current, this, um, this material. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with it? <laughs> like, ah, so what you do with it, once you get it, right? Down, will it get stronger? Like, how, what do you do with this crazy thing? Yeah, you anchor it into the heart, right? And okay. so we learn to get into the heart. We learn to like rest here and live from this place. And there's a meditation of learning to travel in the body with that little spirit center that we, we located. And you travel in the body through a doorway in the back of the heart, you get into the heart and you set up camp there. Now this is where you're living from, living in the heart. And then every time you find yourself not there, you come back. And so the practice becomes returning and returning. And the more you walk a pathway, the easier and quicker it gets to, to walk it. And so you can keep coming back to living from your heart. So that's what then you do is you just live from your heart and blast this energy out into the world and it becomes, inspiration and a blessing for all around you and you are sort of bringing in the fourth dimensional energies into the third dimension you know this is maybe how we make the change is we bring that energy in and we start to just live it so that's i guess what we do with it right is we just be it and in that and activate others to also step it up to that level and create the change from the inside out and is this energy like for some reason last couple of weeks plasma keeps coming to me is that is it a plasma energy or is it a, do you know, like what is the energy i mean I, we don't need to know but a lot it of it is four dimensional prana actually okay and then can you have both the beings both parts of you come in or is it just one at a time both of them come you in can do, you can do that absolutely yeah there's certainly no rules in that it's nice in the beginning to connect with one and, and then establish that. And then at some point you can open up and maybe, for me, when I was doing this, and so I've done that cell, that ceremony many times, right? Every time in the workshop, I'm doing that. And then for the first year or so, the same higher self came in every time I did it. And then once a year later, the other one showed up. And I was like, oh, it's a different one this time. I didn't ask for that. They just, he just showed up when he was ready. And now I just open up and I never know which one's gonna show up. Uh, but I just let it be what it is. And it's just a hundred percent you. It's all you. <laughs> yes. That yeah. is so cool. So we're actually really learning how to operate this operating system of who we are. Cause I feel extended <laughs> right now, just like beyond the body. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, um, I hope I don't hit anything <laughs> like a cat, right? That's a good segue, into, off the furniture. <laughs> good segue into talking just a little bit about the Merkaba and which is a huge piece of Gumbelow's work. It's a huge piece of the workshop and it's kind of where it all kind of goes to is learning to activate the light body, which is the Merkaba, which is, you know, the living field, the star tetrahedrons that spin around the body at nine tenths the speed of light and allow you to travel into the fourth dimension when you if you if you die consciously which means dying with your consciousness intact and not going into forgetting and then having to be reborn again and have the blinders on and forget if you can die consciously with everything intact then you can go to the next dimensional levels and that requires a living merkaba field which is an interdimensional vehicle and that field is 55 to 60 feet in diameter around the body. And there's a field that's called a, the Leonardo sphere, which is just around the body like this. And this is where the star tetrahedron spin once you activate the Merkaba from the heart. But the field extends out to about 55 to 60 feet in diameter. And it can happen spontaneously sometimes for people when they just line up in a certain way, even if they don't know what the word Merkaba is. But a lot of times people will come to the workshop and then, you know, act, we go through a whole process and then activate it there. But who knows, you know, you might be starting to feel this uh, energy rotating around you. And that field, the Merkaba field, its main purpose is for ascension. So if the earth were to shift in, into the fourth dimension herself, then we could consciously go into the fourth dimension. Or when we die, then we'll consciously have our memories intact and can travel to the next dimensions. But while we're here on earth, if you have a living activated Merkaba field, 
it can be utilized and programmed to protect you and keep you safe and not let negative energy in and, and things like that. And so for me, I feel like I'm walking around all the time as like a galactic superhero. I, I just, I feel invincible. Like nothing can come into my field without my permission, period. Like, and so I can go into any realm or any scene or whatever, and I'm not at risk of negative entities or entities attaching to me or anything like that. It, and keeps my water and food clean and it keeps good vibes. And just, I've programmed my Merkaba to radiate love to the world so that wherever I'm walking around, you know, I'm just feel like it's blessing people all around me. And so it's just like galactic superhero level stuff. It's like being in a Jetsons like mobile, like <laughs> you have your own thing. Yeah. Wow. So, so one translation of the Merkaba is chariot or vehicle. Uh, in the Jewish text, that's the translation of it. And so it is, it is a, a vehicle, you know, for traveling. Yeah, I remember Drumbelow telling a story about uh, a guy in Japan during World War II that uh, he was 15 years old when the uh, one of the bombs, the nuclear bombs, was dropped, and he walked right through it, uh, and uh, it was, he was not injured at all, survived, and he lived for 40, 50 years after that. And Drumbelow met him one time, and and he had this uh, glowing field around him that was quite obvious. And, uh, uh, he obviously had his Merkaba activated back then. Uh, wow, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Alyssa, were you going to say something? I probably was going to say something all through. Um, God, Viola, thank you. This was so cool. And now I know which one of my higher selves um, is with me a lot. And and it's a color, it came like in a color, but I could, and I, and um it was just such great validation. This is so awesome. Thank you. And oh, what I wanted to ask was, is it, it's not like, is it like one's a left side, one's a right side, or could it be front and back? Or is it usually like a left side, right side, higher self type thing? That's um, that the doesn't give any specific directional okay. thing. So that's up for your own okay. interpretation. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Sometimes it's, it's not even masculine and feminine. You know, it can be whatever. It could be, you know, non-gendered um, beings that don't even represent, you know, uh, look like humans or who knows. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's fun. That's great. Like fun. <laughs> so any other... Um, Comments or questions? Can we do it again? <laughs> <laughs> and so we have time as well that um, I was hoping if there was time in our hour that we could do that um, or connecting with Mother Earth and Father Sky meditation, the unity breath meditation, because we, we won't have time to do the whole meditation of going into the sacred space of the heart, but this is the first part of it. And it's, it's a valuable meditation unto itself. And it only takes five minutes or so to do, and you can do it at any time. So let's do that now and um, get this Holy Trinity vibration going in our beings, connecting with Mother Earth, which is the planet and all of the living beings, Father Sky or Father Sun, which is, um, all life everywhere. And you can connect to Father Sky or Father Sun through the sun or through the great central sun um, or through just going up to the consciousness grids if you are tuned into them or just somewhere up into the sky where Father Sky can be represented. What's the great central sun? I hear that all the time, but the Drumbelow talks a little bit about the great central sun as like, is it in the center of the universe? You know, the center, oh. there is a sun. Okay, thank you. That's easy enough for them now. So let's just close our eyes and we're gonna begin by connecting with Mother Earth. And we'll do this by imagining a place in nature that you know and love, a real place that you've actually been to before and feel as if you're there right now. And feel that with all of your senses. So you might hear the wind or the ocean. You would feel the earth beneath your feet. Smell the scents. Like with all of your senses, imagine as if you're in this beautiful place that just lights you up with joy.
and feel the love in your heart that activates when you imagine being in this wonderful place that you love. And then feel the love that you have for all of nature. And feel the love that you have for Mother Earth herself, this living being that we live on, who has given us everything that we have, even our human bodies and everything we consume. It all comes from Mother Earth. So feel this love filling your heart that you have for Mother Earth. And don't just think about this love, actually feel this love in your heart. And then take all of this love in your heart, place it into a small sphere in your heart, and then send it down into the earth, all the way to the center of the earth, to the heart of the mother. Just send her your love. It's like a little packet of love. And then open yourself to receive her love as she sends it back to you. And she always will because she's our mother and she loves us so much. And so just say yes and let this love of Mother Earth enter into you from below. Let it rise up into your body and fill your entire being on the emotional level, the physical level, the energetic level, the spiritual level. Just say yes to this love, let it nurture you. And feel yourself connected heart to heart with Mother Earth. And now while keeping this flow of love going between you and Mother Earth, put your attention on a night sky. Imagine as if you are standing outside in a meadow under a beautiful night sky away from the city so that you can see all the stars and you see the Milky Way stretched across the sky. You see the moon. And just witness this vastness, this incredible infinite vastness above and feel the sense of awe and wonder that you have when you look up at such a sky. And feel the gratitude that you have for being alive, being a part of it all and feel the love that you have for Father Sky. And really feel this love in your heart. And take all this love in your heart, place it into a small sphere. Send this love up and out the top of your head, up into the sky where Father Sky will feel and receive your love. And then you open to receive his love as he sends it back to you. And you feel this love enter into you from above, entering into your being and letting it nurture you on every level. Feeling yourself connected heart to heart with Father Sky. and with Mother Earth at the same time. Feeling the love of Mother Earth and Father Sky meeting in your heart. Take a moment to feel the love that Mother Earth and Father Sky have for each other. and also the love that you have for yourself. And this is the Holy Trinity vibration, the Divine Mother, the Divine Father, and you, the Divine Child, a Holy Trinity.
And this is the ancient state of consciousness that allows one to enter into the heart or go into further sacred ceremony. And when that feels complete, you can open your eyes, holding that vibration. Also holding the vibration of your higher self in your heart and just holding all of it. Any comments or sharings? That's so yummy, I don't want to leave. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm, tri I'm tripping. <laughs> Great. <laughs> High vibrational tripping. It's a good thing. This is great. Thank you. Because um, I'm right uh, after this, I'm going to be writing poems. I'm doing poems of each intersection in San Francisco. And um, started with my zip code 94122. I'm almost done. So the last 23 poems will be in this Merkaba. <laughs> and it, it's gonna, they're all going the crossroads, all that are going through Golden Gate Park is where I'm coming back. I just did all of the, I just finished like 400 poems or something this morning. So we're going to switch on that Merkaba and go back to the ocean through the park in this new vehicle. So this is the greatest bike I've ever had. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> so um, you can take those tools and use them anytime, you know, just have them in your toolbox. And if you want to learn more tools, four days worth of tools, you're also welcome anytime to take the whole four day drun below uh, Melchizedek Awakening the Illuminated Heart Workshop. The next one I have coming up online is in March, March 12th to the 15th. And it's just $333 for the whole four days. And if you're in Portland, you can come and do it in person, which is amazing as well. Um, otherwise than that, I'm happy to continue to share information here with the group. And uh, my website is dreamthenewdream.com. So you can visit that and get more information. And so um, thank you.